So as you can see, everybody was involved in this. We had so many people, all the way from the tech team to everybody. Uh, Toynaps or Victoria was so gracious to be connecting with us constantly as we had to get transportation stuff worked out, so thank you. Uh, but it's been amazing. But now, um, I just want to briefly introduce myself a little. My name is Doug Wallace. I, as Pastor Benji said, I grew up in California, uh, near Los Angeles. And then uh, I moved to Hong Kong uh, through my church and through doing some ministry uh, it was about seven, seven and a half years ago. I met my beautiful wife, Tracy. And uh, within three years of moving to Hong Kong, we got married, had our daughter, Joriana, and right about then is when the church approached me to uh, take over as youth director. So uh, that's a little bit of my background, um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, but today's about something uh, a little more important. I should say someone a little more important than me. So today, our main text is Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. That word extol is basically just praise again. Um, some other translations use praise. This one uses extol. Praise, extol can be praised kind of enthusiastically like our wonderful, wonderful worship team was just doing here, um, which I wanted to jump up with, jump up and down with Jonathan, but I, uh, I figured I'd get too tired for being up here. But uh, it's kind of that idea of just, let's just get together and praise him, all peoples. For, um, and so what we want to do today is, along with this text, is there's actually this text is referenced to in the book of Romans, in the New Testament where Paul talks about this very psalm. So in Romans chapter 15, it says, May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other as it is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, when we think of praise, love, and faithfulness, different, di different people here will go to different places. For some of you, praise is music. For some of you, praise is something else. For some of you, when you think of love, you immediately think of a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a spouse, or you think of a child. And hopefully, your hearts also turn to God as well. But what, when you look at faithfulness, which is one of the ones we will really focus on today, we often go straight to our faithfulness. How faithful have I been? Pastor Benji mentioned that before, is uh, even though when we're not faithful, he is. But we keep looking at our own faithfulness, and that can bring us discouragement. And so I hope to bring you encouragement. So as you see here in this text, it says, May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, he gives it to us. When we go to him, he gives us that patience. He gives us an encouragement. We're not supposed to walk in this door and just be nice people. We're supposed to go to God, the source of love, the source of faithfulness, the source of encouragement, and the source of patience. And we walk in this door, and then he will help you or help us live in complete harmony together. Why? So then all of us can join together in one voice, giving praise and glory to God. It's this constant cycle of keeping everything together. We don't just come in and just praise because we're supposed to. We come in here and we praise because we want to. And there's things that God does in our lives if we allow him and we go to him that will draw us to praise him. There are moments where I'll be honest where I will go into praise and my mind is not there and my heart is not there and I see the song and I see the words and I just start singing because I'm supposed to. I do love God, but in that moment I'm just not there. And what I love about God is when you get one song in, two song in, three songs in, he starts to draw your heart. You start praying as you're worshiping and he starts changing your heart. And in that moment, when you get to the fourth song, you're just so starting to praise him because it comes from him. 
that when they end, you're like, oh man, we just really got started. But praise God, today, I was able to do that from the first song, but that's only because I spent time focused on praying on Him. So on the next slide, it says, Therefore, accept each other just as Christ has accepted you, so that God will be given glory. Remember, and that's very important today, remembrance is very big for God. Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promises he made to their ancestors. So what we see here is, oh, next slide, sorry. Therefore, accept each other as, just as Christ has accepted you so that God will be given glory. When God is given glory, we are praising him. He is getting his worship and his praise. But how does that happen? When we remember that Christ in his love, God in his love became a servant to us. When we focus our hearts on Christ and we learn to remember and trust in his faithfulness, that he is true to his promises. We focus on what he's done in the past and we keep going back to the past. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But God all through his Bible, all through his word, keeps reminding the nation of Israel, keeps reminding us, remember, remember, remember. Why do you think that is? Is there, okay, is there anyone in here, if you're going to be honest, some days you feel like you wonder if God is there? Like you know in your heart he's there, but you're kind of going through a difficult time. And you're thinking, man, I know you're there, God, but can you show yourself? I have those days. I have those days. And I have those days where I feel like, man, am I really where I'm supposed to be? Am I really supposed, am I really following God's call? Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And that's for wherever you're at in life. And one of the things I love about God that he has taught me and he will teach all of us hopefully today and in time, and some of you already know this, is God always says, remember. Where were you a year ago? Where were you five years ago? Where were you 10 years ago? Where were you 20 years ago? Where were you before I brought you up? Who were you then? I know for me, when I look back at who I was, I know my true character. My true character was I did not honor my mother and father. I lived my own way. I did not honor God. I used my friends. I was a nice guy. Anybody can be nice, but I used my friends to get my own way. And I didn't see that until God opened my eyes. And I looked back and I thought, wow. It doesn't make me feel like, oh, I'm a terrible person. It just makes me understand who I am with, apart from Christ and who I am in Christ. And it's that constant remembering what he's done that reminds me how faithful he has been, which spurs me on to trust him how faithful he will be. He also came so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote. Now, it skips to 11 because what Paul, the Apostle Paul does is he references a few different psalms. And you can read that in chapter 15. But what I highlighted is from Psalms 117, Paul says, And yet again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Praise him, all you peoples of the earth. And and sometimes we forget that and we miss that. Jesus was Jewish. The church was Jewish. Most of the history is Jewish. Yes, God called on the people of Israel to show his glory to the world. But a lot of it was focused inside because of the sin of man. And that's not because Jewish are bad people. Anybody, if God would have chosen Americans, Filipinos, Hong Kong, Chinese, anybody, we all would have failed because we're not Jesus. But what we see is 
when we talk about praise the Lord all you Gentiles, praise him all you people of the earth, we need to remember that there's nothing we have to do. There's nothing we have to be. There's no club. There's no country. There's no nation. There's no skin color. Nothing. Because it's not about us. It's always about God. It's always about Christ. And that's one of the reasons we praise him. One of the many reasons. So when we get through this Romans, this portion of Romans, Paul ends by saying, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you see this, this progression? I pray starts with prayer. I pray, I go to God, that God, he's the source of hope. He will fill you completely with joy and peace. Because why? You trust in him. But how do you trust in him if day in and day out you're kind of saying, God, where are you? Because my God and your God, he doesn't do stuff for us every day like he's our personal servant. Yes, Jesus came as a servant, but God does not follow around doing things for you. He doesn't just make you wealthy. He doesn't take care of every sickness in the moment. He doesn't, if some people lose a job, if you have people suffering, marriages are suffering, he doesn't immediately, every time I say so, God, take care of that and fix it. Because he wants us to trust in him. He wants us to go to him in prayer. He wants us to be filled from him. And it is only when we pray and get the source of hope that we will be filled completely with joy and peace because we trust in his faithfulness. Then it will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that's kind of the way it's supposed to be and the way we want it to be and the way we pray it will be and the way we will strive it will be. But praise is hard. Praise is hard when you're in pain. Praise is hard when you come into church and you've just had a fight with your spouse. Praise is hard when you find out your mom is in the hospital getting about 500 tests on the other side of the country or other side of the city and you can't be there for her. Praise is hard when your best friend, his wife, just left him and took off and he's broken. Praise is hard when we pe see people die. Life is hard. Life can get dark. Life is real. God doesn't promise us that we won't go through these things. And that's so important why we need to keep remembering, remembering, because when we get into those moments and when God is allowing things to happen, not causing, but allowing things to happen with so much pain that are often the results of sin, God wants us to remember his faithfulness in the past so we can be filled with his peace and joy even while we're in pain. And often we forget his faithfulness because we focus only on our unfaithfulness. And then we feel unworthy. And it sometimes drives us away from God. It can make us go through those, those plateaus in our faith where we just feel kind of almost dead. And we feel unworthy and we don't go back to him. We don't remember. We focus on that. And then we go one week, two weeks, three weeks, maybe a month or two. Maybe you haven't been going to church as much. Maybe you haven't been reading the Bible and you start to mess up a little bit more and things get harder. And then you feel unworthy to serve in church. You unworthy to go to the prayer meeting. You feel unworthy to go out in missions. You feel unworthy to share the gospel with your friends. Your friends are sitting there and their only hope is Jesus Christ and you can't do anything because you feel unworthy. I was there. I can still remember to this day and it, it just breaks my heart. I can still see the look of the faces on my friends who I Professing to be a Christian would go out and do bad things with them. I would go out partying and doing all kinds of stuff. And then in the middle of the night, in a drunken slur, I would try to tell them about Jesus. And then I was the same person who would use them and love them. 
and never truly was a witness. And they're still back in California to this day. They have broken marriages. They have drug addictions. They're just, it's just a mess. And they had me in their life for days. And all my own way and it caused me to feel unworthy and really the only times I really tried to be that and that drunk evangelism does not work it does not work so I was focusing on my unworthiness when I was sober and I would keep my mouth closed I would know my friends know I'm living in sin and I'm not worthy to share with them. And so as people, things start to happen, people start to come in on us. People are complaining against us. People are not happy with us. People are arguing with us. And we ourselves, we are often our hardest critics. We're tearing ourselves down. We collect all of this stuff and we carry it around and that becomes who we are. In a minute here, we're going to watch a video and... Um, this video is a, is a skit and it's kind of self-explanatory but it's the idea of what I just said as things happen to us and as we do things to others all these things start to collect and this is how we try to walk through life Cause the speakers to go. No, no. So that is the thing about the bag. You turn it on. No, no. Mommy says I'm true. Peanut butter is just like that. No, no, no. Mommy says that. Thank you. Mommy says I'm just different. Your mommy says you're just different. Yeah, I'm just different. Go back to your camera. And I go. Bye. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It's one of the biggest lies we teach children. Words hurt. They cut me. If we carry around the words of other people, essentially what we do is we're collecting baggage. See, we can't we can't find our self-worth based on what other people think of us. We have to find our self-worth based on Christ and our relationship with Him. But it doesn't seem to be that easy. And as life goes on, we get older, just to collect more baggage. Sometimes we pick up baggage from people who are very. No, I know. I know, Shelly. I know. It's like we talk for three hours and it seems like five minutes. I know. Don't let a girl come between us, okay? 
you did this. Look, man, you know I've liked her since we were in kindergarten. You were supposed to talk to her for me, yes, but, but I've been your best friend since kindergarten, and we've always said growing up, best friends forever, right? Yeah, well, you know what? Forever just got a lot shorter. So Introduce them and just, just have them stand up. Okay. Can you give me and my friends a little ride to school? Okay. It's cold, I don't want to ride my
So it's cool. I mean, uh, I've got it under control. Thank you, Richard. I think for most of us that have been following Christ for a while, we know that bags don't just drop immediately like that. But what I've looked at in my life is that I've collected baggage and it gets overwhelming and I focus on Christ. He'll take a bag away here and there and he will give you rest. It'll get lighter. But if you notice what he said at the end, he said, remember. He said he just gets overwhelmed because he's got all this baggage, all these things other people have done to him, all these things that he has done to people, and then he sin. So he's already beaten down, and then that sin just comes in for like the final piece to knock him down, to discourage him and make him feel unworthy and not live the full life that Christ has given us. And he remembered one of his promises. God doesn't promise we won't be in pain, but he does promise to give us rest when we seek him. And often we try to find rest in TV, movies, games, food, family, whatever we can. Even our own spouse, our own kids. We think, I've had a hard day, I'll just go hang out with them. And then we wake up the next day and we're exhausted. We forget his promises and that's what we're supposed to remember. So, as we look at the next slide, we look at uh, three main concepts that are going to get the phase, all right? So, one thing we need to realize is God has created us to desire to praise. We have this desire, whether you're a Christian or not, no matter who they are in the world, we love to praise and worship things. It's whether we worship the creator or the creation. And so, some things are not even bad things, like basketball. I was out here with... Uh, some of the boys yesterday, we were talking about it, and the whole time they're telling me about their favorite basketball players, and they just couldn't stop talking about Kyrie Irving and Steph Curry and, and what do you play and what do I play? And I, I was the same way growing up. I'm a big sports guy, and so we love to talk about our favorite NBA players. And, and there's something about praising people, things, everything that God has put in us that feels good. So, like, if I have a really good food or a restaurant what do we do when we find that new restaurant we can't wait to tell people right have you been to this place have you been there it was so good they had this they had that and you tell them about the smells and the taste and you just praise it and it feels so good and then those people go and then they eat it and then they come back with you and then you now have this fellowship you have this like secret new restaurant and you guys are talking about it, like oh you're telling your friends yeah we went there together last week and it's so good you have to go there same thing with music I deal with a lot of teenagers. They love to talk about K-pop. And I know Hannah and a couple others were talking about it yesterday. I can't figure out why. <laughs> of course, I am older, but I can't figure out why. But I was the same way. And when I was a kid, 
my dad used to make fun of my music and he'd say, yo, back in the days, music was real music. Now you kids, you listen to junk. That's not music. You know, it's the same thing. It always goes. I understand. But anyways, we can almost create these subcultures of things we praise. So if we all like, like for me, a lot of my friends like the Los Angeles Lakers. So we would go to a restaurant, watch the Lakers, and we're talking about them, we're praising them, and we're high-fiving, and it feels good to praise. Same thing with wherever you're at. It can be art, it can be music, it can be movies. You just see an amazing movie and you come out and you can't wait to start texting about it or calling your friends or talking to people and you want them to go see it. And so this praise that God puts in our hearts, this desire to praise things, desire to worship things, he puts it in there and then we want to go do it and we want to share it with people. And then that creates fellowship as we, we praise together. And then it increases the infection, respect, and desire for more of that thing. So if it's, a, if it's a favorite basketball team, if it's a favorite restaurant, as you praise it, as you talk about it, it creates, creates this affection and this respect for the place. It kind of has this place of honor. And then it, it creates the desire, and let's go again. I can't wait for the next game. I can't wait for the next concert. I can't wait for the part two of, you know, whatever your favorite movie is. And you guys talk about it, and it creates this in you, and God put this in us. See, the focus, as we know, is supposed to be praise for His glory. Is it bad to praise a restaurant? No. Is it bad to talk about your favorite basketball teams? No, that's not bad. That's life. God has given us good things, and it's okay for us to talk about how amazing they are. As long as our hearts long for people to know that God is the source of all good. Now, we don't have to bring that up in every single conversation, but they, they open up doors for us to praise God. They open up doors for us to praise His glory and to know, let people know that. And when we praise together as the church, you follow the same process. It brings us joy to invite people in. You see the joy of the worship team. They want to, they're not performing for us. They're inviting us in to worship the Lord. And when we bring people in and you see someone who's just surrendered their life to Christ and they finally have that freedom and they're in tears and they're so excited and you invite, and you invite them into your world and you praise them, it creates that fellowship because we're all praising God together and that's the way God created us. So it's, yes, praises for His glory. Yes, praises for Him. But God put it in there for something for us. It gives us joy. When we focus on the Lord, He gives us joy. It feels good to praise God together. Amen? It feels good to have fellowship around the Lord. I was with some students last week on a retreat and we prayed for an hour together. And they usually, they just, no matter how much we talk to them, they don't spend a lot of time alone with the Lord. They don't spend a lot of time in prayer. And I'm just wondering, you know, when we get done, are they, we're, my eyes were closed. I'm wondering if they're sitting there the whole time going, ah. But we just, I would pray, they would pray, they would pray, I would pray, they would pray, they would pray. And we went on and on for about an hour. And then when we got done later on, I asked them, I said, how did that feel? And they said, so refreshing felt so good and they even told me remember we had lunch right after do you remember how joyful we were together because a lot of times they want to play games and they get their minds off what they're going through and they want to just distract themselves and there's 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 no real rest in that and joy in that it's a little bit of fun so we have praise we have love we need to focus on his love first. Obviously, he is the source of love. The Bible literally says God is love. We focus on his love for us and that he created all of us. He created all the good things. Every breath you take is from him. All the food you eat, the joy you have, the friends you have, the spouse you have, the kids you have is from him. That's his love, his grace, his mercy. 
We talked about in Romans 15 earlier, all the people of the earth. We experience his love. We are all unworthy. If you guys knew me and you knew Pastor Benji, which I hope you know him better than me, you would know that we are no more worthy to stand up and hear and speak than you. I, I, Pastor Benji, Pastor Stan, we're not worthier. We have no worthy. Our worthy is Christ. We stand up here because of Christ, and that's what we see at the end, the cross. Romans 5.8 says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Pastor Benji was still a sinner. He was born in sin, the Bible says, in Psalm 139. The Bible says we are born in the womb. We come out of the womb in sin. We're no more worthy than each other. It's his worthiness and that love that he given us, that he created us. He gives us our breath, our food, everything we need. He gives us family, he gives us joy. But most importantly, our focus should be on loving him back. And that's not always easy when we've got all of this baggage and we're wondering, where are you, God? So we come to the, the, the last point is faithfulness. And this is the one we keep going through. And this is the one I'm hoping God will put in your hearts and you'll take with you. In the Old Testament, they cross. This is after the Exodus. This is after going out of Egypt. They were finally going into the promised land, but there was another river. It wasn't the, it, um, it was the Jordan River and they had to get across. It wasn't the Red Sea. That was a different crossing. And so God said, I want you to take your people, which there was probably, I don't know how many, a uh, couple million, Pastor Stan, maybe Pastor Benji would know, but they had a lot of people going in and they had to get across the river. And so what God said is he said, take the Ark of the Covenant that had the presence of God and have the priests carry it and walk into the water. And when they did that, the waters went, just like the Red Sea, it opened. They went across, the whole of Israel went across on dry ground. And then what did God do? He said, put a pile of stones from that river that was under the water where he moved it. Grab those stones, bring it over, put a pile, put a big pile as an altar to me. Why? So that your kids, when they say, why? Why are these stones here? Why do you tell us it's holy ground? Why do you tell us not to go play over there? We want to go play and climb on it. He says, so you would remember that I fulfilled my promise. I was faithful. I told you I was going to bring you into the promised land. And that was the final entry point. Not coming out of Egypt. They were in the desert for 40 years. And a lot of those people were unfaithful and didn't even get to go into the promised land. But their descendants did. And they finally went in. And that final crossing, they put a pile of stones. Uh, the Jewish people celebrate the Feast of Purim. It's to remind them of what God did in, uh, through Esther. When the Jewish people have been taken away because of their sin into captivity, they were with the Persians, and God used Esther to free them. They have a feast every year. The Passover. You guys know about Passover. When, when Jesus came in and he did the Last Supper, they were there celebrating Passover. Passover, the whole point of that was to remember that God had done a miracle in Egypt to get them out. It was the last miracle. He did 10 miracles. It was the last one. It was okay. I told you I'm going to get you out. He did one miracle. It didn't happen. I'm telling you I'm going to get you out. He did 10. On the last one, this is what they celebrate every year. Passover. And what that spills over into us as Christians is communion. Why do we do communion? What does the scripture reading that we go through, what does it say? Do this in remembrance of me. Why? Because we walk into church on Sunday morning with so much baggage, so much pain, so much stress, so much anxiety. Hopefully not every Sunday. Hopefully not every Sunday. If it is like that for you, please pray and ask 
Pastor Benji and, and, and your church family, not just Pastor Benji, everybody can do it. Pray together, pray together. But we do go through those seasons where it feels like every Sunday. But he said, do this in remembrance of me. This is when we focus on his faithfulness. When we remember his faithfulness, it stirs up a desire in us to praise him all the more. Because we walk in here and we're thinking about ourselves and all of our problems. And life is just hard and the music turns on and you're just not there. But when we focus on his faithfulness, it stirs up a love in us that causes us to want to praise even while we're in pain. It reminds us we are loved. Sometimes we feel like we're not loved because things are not going well. So when we focus on his faithfulness, when we think back, it helps us and it creates a stronger faith in us. When God calls you to go do something, what do you usually think? I'm not good enough. I haven't read enough Bible. I don't know how to sing. I really don't know how to sing. I would love to know how to sing. If someone can teach me how to sing, please teach me how to sing. I would love to sing. But I'm one of the people who I love and I worship with my heart, but I sing really quietly because I don't want anybody to hear my voice. Unless the music's really loud and then I'll sing loud and then the music goes down and I'm like, ah! <laughs> but it creates a stronger faith in us. So when we go in and we say, oh, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, God says, remember. God says, remember what I've done. I have this, uh, don't think about it too much because the analogy falls apart if you pick it apart a little bit, okay? But I, I, t I share this with the youth often. Um, I have this, this kind of little story, uh, this picture and a story analogy. I call it breadcrumbs, okay? Again, just, just go with me, okay? So the idea is in life, you're walking through a forest and as you get deeper into the forest, there's more trees and it gets what? Darker. You start to feel lost. And so the idea behind this is while you're going through life, every once in a while, there'll be a breadcrumb on the ground. You pick it up, you eat it, it sustains you. It gives you the nourishment you need. It gives you what you need and it reminds you I'm going the right way. Someone left this for me. And as you go on, there's another one. And there's sometimes when you're walking through the forest, you haven't seen one for a while and you're thinking, uh-oh, I'm going the wrong way. I need something. And so what I tell them is I tell them, for your own faith and for the faith of those around you, you need to be sharing what God is doing in your life. Because often when we come together, we are hurting and we pray for each other's pain and we should. And we talk about all the things that are going wrong and the stress at our work or our school or those things and we should, we should share life together. But what I tell them is, is when you share what God's doing in your life, and then you write it down, remember it, and go back to it. That will help sustain you. That will help sustain you. When you're going through the forest and there's no breadcrumbs around. The breadcrumbs, I tell them, is a moment where something happens and you know that it's God and God alone. It's not by your strength. It's not by anybody's strength. It's by God's strength. It's His love. It's His faithfulness. And the biggest breadcrumb of all that we always have to go back to is the cross. Because you may have not seen it, but it happened for you. And we need to go back to that. So when we feel unworthy, we remember it. If those thoughts come in your head, what I say is, yeah, I am unworthy. But Jesus is worthy. And I keep going back to that. But there's other things. We, w we went into China and there was this lady there. We, we went with this team of students and we would go up there. We go up there two or three times a year. And we went in and there was this lady on the bed and she, I, it, it was, it, she was quite old and her legs were completely atrophied. Like there's just no muscle, nothing. It was just skin and bone. And she was just crying in pain and rolling around. It's actually the pastor's wife. Pastor's wife is feeling so discouraged. She's crying. 
and we were doing home visits. So we went in there, and we went in there, and she, for some reason, she just, she was, she was wearing clothes, the, the, the mom was, the grandma was, but she only had shorts on. For some reason, I guess the pastor's wife wanted us to know, she just threw open the blanket. She said, because they were in a moment in the forest where they hadn't had a breadcrumb in a while and they were discouraged and they were in pain. The mom couldn't even take care of herself. She couldn't go to the washroom. She couldn't cook. She couldn't do anything. She was there and while she was there, she was rolling around in agony. And we had only been there for about two minutes and God said to me, just pray. Because I'm sitting there and the students are looking at me like, okay, you're the leader. What are we going to do? And I'm sitting there going, what, what do I say about this? And God said, just pray. And I said, you know what? Let's just pray. Let's just pray. I said, I want to pray. You pray. You pray. We literally got on our knees and we laid hands on her and we prayed. And we just prayed. Like, just, we weren't thinking about it. We weren't trying to make it flowery or nice. We just prayed. And then when we stopped, the mom was crying and the grandma was crying. And they were just crying and crying. And I said, and I, I asked the mom, uh, the pastor's wife, I said, what's wrong? I said, are, are you okay? And she said, my mom just said, I've never felt love like that. I feel so loved right now. She didn't get up and start walking and jumping around. We went back to Hong Kong. We came back a few months later on our next trip. Pastor's wife comes up to us, the biggest smile on her face. She said, do you know what happened? Ever since you guys prayed for her, my mom has been walking around, cooking for herself, happy. She's going to the bath. She can take care of herself. And she's just singing and cooking and doing everything. And we have students, like, students that are with us. One of them gave a testimony. She said, I was ready to give up because God was not there for me. I didn't think he was real. And that breadcrumb brought her to tears to praise God, his faithfulness. Now, just to show you how real life is, we came back again the next year. The mom had condition got really bad again. And I got discouraged again. And I thought, man, what's going on? And I asked the pastor's wife, I said, is your mom a Christian? Is she given her life to Christ? She said, yes, she has. That was it. God doesn't promise us healing and perfection. God doesn't promise us that we won't be in the desert and darkness. But what he does promise is he will be faithful and we have to remember. So these students and I, we have this breadcrumb, this moment where we know without a doubt, nothing but God. And we hold on to that. And when I feel like I'm not supposed to be here, I remember all the things God did big small to bring me to Hong Kong to introduce me to my wife to bring me to AIC to give me where I'm at because I have days where I doubt myself but what we have to do together is we need to share what God's done in our lives so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna have lunch together we're gonna fellowship together and my challenge is to you you don't have to come up with a great story. Come up with a small story. Last week, God did something small for me, and it's amazing. Don't feel pressure that you have to have some mega story that goes in the news. Share something small. But share, come share things that God's been doing, and make it a regular part. When you come together to pray, don't just pray for the sorrows. Praise His faithfulness. Remember his love and his faithfulness and remind each other, remind each other and remind each other so that every day you wake up and you feel that doubt and that pain, you have the faith to move forward in his love. The last slide, just go back to the original text. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For his unfailing love for us is powerful. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Praise the Lord. Honestly, in life, you're not always going to be able to read that and go, yeah, that's my life. Because we think if his faithfulness endures forever, then what's wrong with my life right now? 
we got to remember what his promises were and his promises were not. And we trust in his promises, what he said he will do, and that he's faithful. I want to pray, and, um, and then we will move forward. So let's bow our heads together, and let's pray to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, God, you are an amazing God. You are faithful. Your faithfulness endures forever. Your mercy endures forever. Your love endures forever. And we want to praise you. We thank you what you have done for us. We thank you for all that you've done in terms of creating us, giving us life, giving us everything we have. All good things come from you. God, but in this life, as you know, there's also so much pain. So I pray for those in this room right now who are dealing with physical pain. Lord, that you would bring them healing in Jesus' name. I pray for those who are dealing with emotional pain from brokenness, from family and betrayal and hurt, for things they've done and things done to them. Lord, give them peace today. Show them your love. Fill them with your Holy Spirit and they would not focus on their unworthiness and their unfaithfulness. They would focus on your faithfulness. Lord, I pray that you would stir up in hearts in this room right now stories, remind people, bring to remembrance in their hearts and minds things you've done so they don't feel like they have to make something up or they have to just find something. Lord, that something in their mind would just pop up and that would be the Holy Spirit saying, share this. Do you remember when I the Holy Spirit was working through you in that moment for the glory of Jesus and the glory of the Father. Help us, Lord, as a church to remember you in its communion, when it's every week, Lord, that we would remember the things you've done. Help us to make that a part of our culture so that we would come in with love, we'd come in with fellowship, we'd come in with joy, and we would praise your name for your faithfulness, even in, in the middle of the pain. So may you bless this day, Lord. Give us unity and love in Christ. And we give praise, honor, and glory to the name of Jesus, the name of all names. And both churches together as one family says, Amen. Okay, before we go on, I've been...